We got some really big and scary news that's happening in the San Francisco real estate market. And this is a very good example for not just San Francisco, but plenty of other American cities and also cities worldwide. We're seeing some of the biggest defaults. And if this isn't giving you 2008 type vibes, I'm not sure what's going on with you. But this is 2008 round two. We're seeing some of the most expensive skyscrapers in the US going default. And I think the starting position will most likely be in San Francisco, but it's going to spread out to other major cities. Now, remember, not every city is struggling, right? New York City, yes, they're kind of iffy, but they're still pretty strong given that they're the number one financial center. Miami being dubbed the Wall Street of the South also really helps its case. And Miami commercial real estate is actually doing pretty well. But many cities on the eastern coast you got places like, you know, Jersey City, you know, not really doing so well. You got like Washington, D.C., Baltimore. You also got several suburbs in Delaware. They're all taking massive hits. And then you go to the West Coast, you get to the Bay Area, Los Angeles, San Diego, Seattle. They're all doing pretty poorly. But we're all, this is the first time we see a massive apartment complex, NEMA, losing half its value. In fact, the value of the building has lost so much that it's falling well below the load balance. And people are also saying that the overall mortgage of this building is probably exceeding the actual value of the property, which the best thing to do as a landlord is just to default on the property at that point. Just give it back to the bank. We've seen several incidences of that, like for example, the Park 55 hotels, right? These guys defaulted on one of the biggest mortgages in decades. It was like over $700 million. It was two enormous hotels in San Francisco. And they pretty much said that it's no longer valuable. Like the debt that they have on the building or the mortgage is worth two to three times more than the actual value of the building itself. So they didn't even bother to sell it. They just let it default. And not to mention, if there's a lot of tourists in the area, that's one thing. They could still keep afloat and have some sort of income every month because there's barely any tourists in San Francisco and the rest of the Bay Area. We're seeing very little construction, very little office workers coming back. This is one of the craziest stuff. That hotel is foreclosed. This massive mall right here in San Francisco is now foreclosed. And upcoming next on the show is going to be Nima. This is supposed to be an apartment complex that's in a very good location. It's right next to X headquarters, or by the old days, Twitter. It's next to Uber, Lyft, Reddit, and several other small startups and a lot of apartment complexes. Like back in 2018, when this was built, people were investing in this tower like crazy. In fact, if you were the landlords or a shareholder of this building, you're basically guaranteed to make money, not only from one bedrooms going for over $3,000 a month per rent, but also the value of the building kept rising up because the location is fantastic and San Francisco does not approve skyscrapers every single year. It's actually a rarity when San Francisco approves skyscraper construction. So NEMA here, it's losing a lot of its value. If you look at this, the recently appraised value of NEMA is $279 million. And that's about half of its 2018 value of nearly $544 million. That's crazy when you have such a high-end, newly constructed skyscraper, which just four to five years ago, worth a little over half a billion dollars, now just 279 million bucks. That is not a great sign for this luxury tower. In fact, I'll be pretty worried about the other buildings surrounding it. Because what about this residential building right here? What about the one behind it? These are all very expensive, multi-million buildings that may just got their valuations cut by half. So now these guys who took out loans, you know, they're kind of freaked out. The banks are kind of freaked out because they're like, hold on a second. Back just a few years ago when we appraised your building, you took out like a loan using your building as collateral. But now you're telling me that the surrounding buildings may be only worth half price like what in the world is going on? So you also have a situation where small regional banks are also panicking in the situation, right? Because at first everyone thought, oh, it's just you know the office market. It's just the malls that's losing value. No way residential real estate is losing value. But now you have residential real estate 
buildings are just made for renting to humans is now down by 50%, which really makes you scratch your head. Hold on a second. If I go on Zillow and I look at a condo, is this condo really worth $1.5 million? I know it's in a pretty good location, but is it really worth the value that's listed? If it's half price off, it's $750,000. So now you have a lot of freaking out in the area, right? Because NEMA is a good example of what prices should be around the area. And when you're saying a building of this caliber is only worth 50% off, that's some scary stuff. And this is actually freaking out many investors because now San Francisco, it's losing its luster. It's no longer the tech capital that you think it was. Empty offices, abandoned malls, concerns over crime. The last one is very important because small business owners are pretty fed up now. And San Francisco had plenty of chances in trying to turn itself around, but it never did, right? The same old high crime rate, same old high car breaking rates, and many billionaires and millionaires are no longer investing in the area. And what's worse is San Francisco recently gave approval for two massive skyscrapers to go under construction, which in the old days is like a jackpot. I mean, if you're investing in a company which recently got a green light for a tower, you're gonna be making a lot of money in the near future. But guess what? Those two towers that are supposed to be built are now canceled. Their land is being sent back to the lender, citing concerns of no investors in the area. Investors didn't wanna invest in their building. And what's going on that we're seeing in San Francisco is you're telling me buildings, cha-ching, 50% off, 60% off, 70% off around the area. That's some scary stuff, guys. And if you look at 350 California Street, a great example of what's happening in the market, this is a high-end office tower in downtown, pretty close to Salesforce Tower. And I could tell you that this is a pretty high-end, you know, triple A type building, right? Back in the old days. But now it's selling for 80% off. Like some of these office deals are insane, but now we're getting residential deals. This is like some scary stuff. So now everyone's looking around in the San Francisco market. They're like, hold on a second. Are these units even worth its actual listed price, right? And like I said before, you know, there's a lot of cities around the world struggling, right? You got like Hong Kong property rates are going down. You also have places like Manhattan, Brooklyn property markets are going down. You got places like Seattle, but nowhere as crazy as San Francisco. When you constantly got the high double digit percentages off, something's wrong with the city. And I think something super drastic needs to be done or else the city is just going to the dumps. And right now it's not doing so great. You got high property taxes, insanely high mortgages. And if you look around, yeah, the average 30 year fixed mortgage hitting 8% for the first time since 2000 does not bring me any sort of confidence in the real estate market. In fact, pretty much nobody is willing to buy a house right now. So the Airbnb guys who over leverage that need to offload some properties, good luck, that's not happening. You know, people who own shares of massive skyscrapers that wanna offload it to someone else, they can't because who is gonna be doing an 8% mortgage? That is insanity. When just a few years ago, you could get it for less than 4%. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Comment below, like, comment, and subscribe for more.